Shalom and welcome to Mishpacha. Usually the program is begun by my wife, Debbie, who is the, the hostess. She's the, the main thrust behind the program. But tonight we're continuing on in our Sabbath uh, presentations. And, and um, tonight we're going to cover what's called Havdalah, or sometimes we say Havdalah. Havdalah means separation. It's the ceremony that's conducted at the end of the Sabbath, and it's a special ceremony in our family. I think it's the one that the kids probably enjoy the most. Every and week we have, yes. Well, I was going to say it's a very short ceremony. It's that's not right. very lengthy at all. But you know how we always begin a festival or with the Sabbath with the the uh, candlelight or with yeah. light bringing light. Into mm -hmm. our midst. The candlelight and the wine with the Kiddush. Well, that, a lot of times, that in the act of, of drinking the wine at, at Kiddush comes from the word Kodesh, which means to make holy. And, and holy actually means to be set apart. Right. You see, Havdalah, you're going to be doing some of the same things. You're going to light a light. You're going to be drinking wine. And it also means a separation or set apart, mm -hmm. but in a different way. That's what the word Havdalah comes from. It means to separate. So you're separating that which God mm -hmm. has set apart, which is made holy, from that which is the secular, or the profane, or the mundane. Now to do this, we have a special kit, and you can make your own. It doesn't have to be like our silver one that, uh, that we've built. Let me pass my book to Debbie. I'd like to introduce the various parts. We have a special torch. It's a candle, but you'll notice that there are a number of wicks on top of it. It's not a matter of one wick, like you picture on a candle, but a number of wigs, because it's required that it be a torch, a lapid. And that's very interesting, because you see the torch is symbolic of the Messiah. We have in the covenant of the halves, the covenant that God made uh, on the mountain with Avraham, where they took an animal and split it in half, that during the covenant ritual, Avraham is put to sleep, and passing between the halves of the animal, making an infinite sign, is going to be a lapid, a torch. It replaces the role of Abraham. It becomes his substitute. And that's where we see Messiah. That when Abraham broke the covenant, the penalty didn't fall on Abraham, it fell on Messiah. Also in the book of Judges, Shoftim, we have during the time of Deborah, her husband is named Lapidot Torches. And he is a picture of the Messiah. So remember that through this program, it will help you to pick up some things. Here we have a spice box. And the spice box is called Midal in Hebrew. It has inside various kinds of spices, little holes in the top, to um, be able to smell the spices. Migdal, by the way, means a tower. Here I have another spice box. You're only required to have one, but you can have as many as you like. We have two in our family. This is one that is from a place called Neot Ketamine. Uh, means the biblical landscapes, gardens in Israel. And it is the lavender of the Galilee is inside. And has that got a little bit less in its fragrance? I took clove leaves, which are uh, not clove, but uh, myrtle leaves, which were off of our Sukkot celebration. You have four species you use there. One is myrtle called hadas in Hebrew. It's, it, it has a real a strong scent. We save these and we put them down inside our spice box to have a different kind of spice. Then, maybe if you get the wine please, we have a tray and a wine glass. The wine glass has to be at least four inches, uh, excuse me, four ounces. And the tray is going to be used to take an overflow of the wine because we fill the wine until it flows out the top. Now right here, you want to get you a, uh, a napkin, have some kind of napkin to wipe off the bottom. But we're going to set the wine to the side. And if you don't have some kind of napkin or anything, sure as can be, as you go around passing the wine glass, it, it's going to drip on somebody's clothes and, and really uh, cause a problem. Yes, thank you. So we wipe it off. And my kids really like to go between them as to who gets to carry the candle around and who gets to carry the wine around. 
Okay, Debbie, if you would light our torch. Now, all of this half dollar ceremony really lasts about 15 minutes. Oh, I see you we're brought going, a, a we're tray. We're going to put a little tray in uh -huh, to put what, underneath. Let's, uh, let's, let's move things a little bit closer right now. And if you can give me a little room, I'm going to set this toward the middle, and we'll set this right here. Okay. Right. Now, the ceremony only lasts about 10 or 15 minutes, 20 minutes. You can make it a little bit longer if you like. But uh, it's really a tremendous ceremony. So she's going to light the lapidote, the torch. All right, let's see. Here we go. There we go. I think we're all lit. Okay, we're all lit. Let me get my book. And I'm going to take the wine in my right hand. The right hand speaks of the Messiah. It's the arm of the Lord. It's the strength of the Lord. You always hold it in your right hand. You lift up the cup at this point, and you, say, you recite, Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid, for my strength and song is God the Lord, and He has become my salvation. And you shall draw waters out of the wells of salvation with joy. Salvation belongs to the Lord. Your blessing is on your people. Adonai Zavaot, the Lord of hosts, is with us. The God of Jacob, the God of Jacob, is a refuge for us. For the Jews, it was light and gladness and joy and honor. So be it with us. I will lift up the cup of salvation, and I will call on the name of the Lord. In our family, we usually sing one of these <laughs> verses. It's from Isaiah 12, 2. It's from the verse that says, And you shall draw water out of the wells of salvation with joy. It's called Ufshaptimayim. Ufshaptimayim besasom miyadeya Yeshua. Ufshaptimayim besasom miyadeya Yeshua. Mayim, 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 mayim. Ayayim besasom. Mayim, 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 mayim. Ayayim besasom. Hey, 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 hey. At this point, I set the wine down. And I left the spice box. And Debbie, if you'll take the other spice box. I left the spice box up, and we come to what? Is called, and you might notice that we didn't drink the wine. We come to what's called basamim, the spices. And I'm going to say the blessing in Hebrew. They'll respond afterward, and then we'll do it in English. Baruch katad and I, Eloheinu melech alam, borei mene basamim. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who creates the different kinds of spices. Amen. Okay, now what we do is we... We smell the spices, and in this, we remember all of the blessings that God gave us during this festival. We remember the songs we sang, the foods we ate, the people that we were able to visit with. We remember the teachings and the Torah studies and all of these things. Each of these are blessings. And in our family, one of our customs is what we ask each member of the family two things that were special about the Sabbath. And I'm just going to give you some examples. One that Myron always says is that he's thankful for the challah. He loves his mother's challah, and he will say that every time. And Rebecca, she loves to have a friend over. And so anytime that she has a friend over, she's going to say that that was a special blessing to her. And David, he often says, well, I really like the Torah reading. And he'll have another one. And Paula, what might you say? Happy to be there and all these things. Debbie, how about you? Um, I always like the time with family. And um, I, I think in this particular time, although our entire family is not here with us, I think I'm thankful that we're able to be a part of the lives of people of the primetime viewing audience. And, okay, so... Uh, so the people out there that we oftentimes do not see, it makes us feel a part of their lives and that they can be a part of ours. So spices are to think of the blessings. And you can incorporate this however you want in your family and just you know be able to pick it up uh, pretty easy. Uh, now you might notice that we've seen 
Uh, what we've done, uh, I mean, we lit the, the we lit the uh, lit the light, the torch. We poured the wine, and it spilled out. And we passed the so sight has been involved, and then now smelling was involved because we smelled the spices, and hearing has been involved. We heard the blessings as they were said. You might get an idea that this is going to have to deal with the five senses, because you see, we are called to worship God with all everything that we have. So we go to our next part, which is called Ha'esh. At this point in the Havdalah, we need to have our spice box, one, two, however many we have, and our wine set down on the table, but we have it off the tray. Now remember in our tray, we have the spilled wine from when we first started. We take the Havdalah candle, the Lapid, the torch, we hold it up and we say the blessing. Brukat Adonai, Elohim Melakalam, Bore Mure Ha'esh. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who creates the light of the fire. And everyone responds? Amen. Amen. Now, we pass it around. And as we pass, notice how each person does. They're going to extend their hands to the warmth, spreading their fingers so they can see the rays of light flashing between it. Why they do that is because of a prophecy. In the book of Habakkuk, chapter 3, verse 3, God came from Timon, the Holy One, from Mount Paran, with rays of light flashing from his hand. Therein his power was hidden. It speaks of the coming of the Messiah. Also, that you notice that they look at the palms of their hands because it's believed that God has our names written in the palm of his hand. You might also notice they looked at the fingernails let me pass my book and pass the, the torch to my wife. You look at your fingernails also because the fingernails grow, continue to grow after one dies, and it speaks of life after death. Part of the promise that we have in the torch, which represents our Messiah. So that being done, we set this down. And if I can have my Zadora once again. And uh, we're going to, there's a special prayer, and it's called the Hamadville prayer. We pick the wine up. And remember, when we said the blessing for the wine earlier, we didn't drink the wine, but we pick the wine up, we hold it in our right hand. And I'm going to read this in Hebrew and then in English. Brukata Adonai Eloheinu Melakalam Hamadvil ben Kodesh Lachol ben Or Lachoshek ben Israel La Amin ben Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who makes a distinction between holy and profane, between light and darkness, between Israel and the heathen nations, between the seventh day and the six working days. Blessed are you, O Lord, who makes a distinction between holy and profane. You say? Amen. Amen. Now, we pass the wine to be drunk. So, at this point, we've seen, as we've gone through each of the various things, and we have smelled the spices, we have felt the heat of the flame as we extended our hands, we have heard each of the blessings, and now we exercise taste. Because we are called with all of our senses, not only with our, our mouths, but with all of our senses, to exercise in the worship of God. So, at this point, before we read the Hamadville prayer, or the, the remainder of the prayer, we're going to sing a song. And this song is sung every Sabbath. It's a very ancient song. And it speaks of Elijah the prophet who would come and precede the coming of the Messiah. Now, let me explain that this song is sung by everyone. Everyone around the world has been sung for probably 2,000 years. Every Sabbath at the conclusion. It's not a custom that we have added to our family because we like the song. It is done by all Jewish families as they observe the Havdalah. And the song is called Eliyahu Hanabi, Elijah the Prophet. And the words go, Elijah the Prophet, Elijah the Tishbite, Elijah the Giladite, 
May he come soon in our days, and may he bring Messiah, son of David. Eliyahu Hanabi. Eliyahu Hanabi. Eliyahu Hatishbi. Eliyahu, Eliyahu, Eliyahu Haginadi. Bim Heran Reyavenu Yavo Eleinu Im Mashiach Bin Nabi Im Mashiach Bin Nabi May He who sets the holy and profane apart blot out our sins before His sight and make our numbers as the sand again, and as the stars of night. The day declineth like the palm tree shade. I call on God, who leadeth me aright. This morning, the, the morning cometh, thus the watchman said, although it now be night. Thy righteousness is like Mount Tavor vast. O let my sins be wholly put to flight. Be they as yesterday forever past, and as a watch at night. The peaceful season of my prayers are o'er, would that again had rest my soul contrite. Worry am I of groaning evermore. I melt in tears each night. Hear thou thy voice, my voice, be it not vainly sped. Open to me the gates of lofty height. For with the evening dew is filled my, uh, is filled my head, my locks with drops of night. O oh, grant me thy redemption while I pray. Be thou entreated, Lord of power and might, in twilight, in the evening of the day, yea, in the gloom of night. Save me, O Lord my God, I call on thee. Make me to know the path, uh, the path of the aright. From score and wasting sickness, snatch thou me. Lead me from day to night. We are the clay of thy hands, O Lord. Forgive us our sins both grave and light, and day shall unto day prove forth thy word, and night declare to night. May he who sets the holy and profane apart blot out our sins before his sight, and make our numbers as the sand again, as the stars of night. We conclude the Havdalah with a prayer that's called the Ribon ha Olamin. It is a prayer that you pray that, uh, that God would grant you the power to walk in his Torah, that he will protect you in the week. During the time of the week that is called the secular, the profane, the mundane. Ruler of the universe, Father of mercy and forgiveness, we ask that you allow us to begin the working days which are drawing near to us in peace. Release from all sin and transgression, cleanse from all iniquity, trespass and wickedness, and clinging to the study of your Torah and to the performance of good works. In the coming week, allow us to hear only tidings of joy and gladness. May there not arise in the heart of any man envy of us, or in us envy of any man. O our King, our God, Father of mercy, bless and prosper the works of our hands, and all who have thoughts, who love thoughts of good to us and your people Israel, lift them up and prosper them and fulfill their objective. But all, all who conceive against us and your people Israel, plans which are not for good, frustrate them and cause their plans to fail as it is written. Take counsel together, but it will come to nothing. Speak the word, but it will not stand, for God is with us. Open to us, Father of mercies and Lord of forgiveness, in this week and the weeks to come, the gates of light and blessing, redemption and salvation, of heavenly help and celebration, of holiness and of peace in the study of your Torah and of prayer. And also, let this scripture be fulfilled in us. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings good tidings, who proclaims peace, who brings glad tidings of good things, who proclaims salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. Amen. And say la. At this point, At this point, we take we take our lapid.
and it has burned down quite a bit as we've gone through the ceremony. And we have the wine that is in our tray that overflowed. Now we remember that this lapid, it represents scripturally the Messiah. And we're going to take it and we're going to extinguish it. As we do, the Sabbath or the festival is formally concluded. We listen to it as it suffers, it fights the flame against the wine. But realizing that our Messiah was extinguished in his own blood. And he was called the suffering servant, the afflicted one. So we have the illustration of what it's like without Messiah in the world is darkness. At this point, we bring the lights back up. Anciently, each individual could have a little oil lamp. This is what we read in the book of Acts chapter 20, where Paul spoke. And it doesn't say that uh, the first day of the week. It says at the end of the Sabbath, they were all gathered together and he spoke till midnight. And a child fell out the window and says, how do we know that it was the end of the Sabbath? And How do we know that it was speaking of the Havdalah because it has an expression that is unique for the Havdalah. It says that each person, each one had his own light. You see, Messiah is the light of the world. He's the Lapid. He's the torch. But we are individual lights. And every week as we go through the Havdalah, these, these types of, of teachings and these types of uh, messages come out to us. Now, I've made a mistake in going through and I'd like to correct my mistake. Back at the very beginning, after we have done the song, just after we sang the song, Uf Shaptimayim, you know, with joy you draw water out of the wells of salvation, there was a blessing that uh, I had skipped, and it's very crucial. And uh, it's the blessing, what you would say, it's the first one, it's the blessing concerning the wine, and you would start off with Savri, Marnam, Ve Rabbanam, Ve Rabbatai, with permission of all those assembled. And then I would sing the blessing Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who creates the fruit of the vine. And then we would set it down at that point without drinking it. That's very important. And then we would go from there, from there into the Vasamin, the blessing for the spices. Let me point out too, as you start to do your Havdalah cer uh, ceremony in your home, that if you would like to sing the blessings, and Debbie has this, this thing about, uh, I say, well, it beautifies the commandments, but she says it does more. And there's a practical use in singing any of the songs that we've been doing here tonight, whether it's a blessing, whether it's a song uh, of history of some sort, or uh, for example, about Eliyahu, or whether it's a song on scripture, such as Ushafta Mayim, which we did earlier from Isaiah, one of the reasons I like for us to sing is that the, the melody helps you with the language. It gives you a, a good way to learn the syllables of pronunciation and, and putting it into context. It also will help you with your memory. Okay, and remembering so, those excellent. verses. That's well, right. now once you've learned this, the same tune that you did for the Hagafin, for the, the, uh, the, 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 the wine, you actually can use that same tune for the spices. Okay, you can do exactly the same thing. For I the mentioned high. also that every time a blessing is said, the, the one who recites the blessing usually does not say Amen. Amen. But the others who are within hearing will say it. And the reason of that is, is basically we are affirming what you have done. One person usually does the blessing because it lowers the risk of making a mistake. And, and you it, say, what you're saying when you say amen is, I agree. Exactly right. I agree. It's as if you had said the blessing yourself when you say amen. That's right. So, so when you say the blessing at the end, you don't say amen because you'd be saying, I agree with what I just said. Okay, yeah. it's kind of redundant. But uh, at any rate, you see what a powerful, powerful tool that Havdalah is... Well, it utilizes all of the senses that you right. There's the, the sense of sight, the sense of smell, the sense of taste, the, the sense of touching or feeling or, or uh, 
You know, and of course the hearing with the hissing of the candle that goes out. All five senses are utilized in this particular celebration. And one of the chief purposes of the Havdalah is that you would remember, as you brought, it's kind of like you, you see a story or you're telling a story and then you come to where you sum everything up, where you really get down to the emphasis of it. Here is where you take and you sum your Sabbath up or you sum your festival up and it's supposed to sustain you through the next week. It's supposed to carry you through, as you remember these blessings, as you remember these songs, then that's supposed to be the strength that you have when the enemy comes against you. When the Philistines are coming along and chunking rocks down your, your well like they did with Isaac and you have everything that could go wrong, then you remember how good it was during the Sabbath. And that will give you the strength to go forward to the next Sabbath. Well, from our family to your family, we want to thank you for joining with us each week during these programs, and especially tonight as we've taken you through the Haftalah and the ceremony. And in a lot of ways, I feel that all of us kind of feel you coming into our living room and feel, uh, feel your presence uh, right there. So I'm going to do something different. In the next several programs, my daughter Paula is not going to be with us. She's going to leave to return back home. And I'd just like for all of us together in this program uh, to say uh, Shalom Havarim at the end. Now, Shalom, you know, it means peace, hello. It also means goodbye. And Havarim means friends. And so from our family, from our Mishpacha, let us say together, Shalom, Shalom. Havarim, and God bless you. We'll see you next week.